Hi, this is Brian Kim. I want to share with you a case of a patient who had extreme orbital fat prolapse. I'm finding more and more patients come to see me with this particular problem. This happens more commonly in patients with significant eyelid laxity, even those with floppy eyelid syndrome. And again, floppy eyelid syndrome tends to be associated with sleep apnea as well. You can see this is the patient's eye, and without any traction on the eye, you can see the bulging of the fat on the temporal side. This patient was complaining of this foreign body sensation and constant like pressure on that side of his eye. And so he was quite symptomatic. And then when you retract the upper lid, you can see how much this orbital fat is prolapsing forward. Patients ask me, why is this happening? And I tell them, you know, there's an orbital septum, which is like a girdle that keeps all of that tissue back. But over time, just like when you get fat bags under your lower lid, you can have fat prolapse on the upper lid. And so this is a patient, you can see there's quite a bit of orbital fat protruding out. And then I'm using the cotton tip to dry the conjunctiva, but also to retract and pull down so I can expose the fornicile conjunctiva there, because that's where I'm gonna make my incision. Since the orbital fat is emanating from posterior, you want to really approach it from the posterior side with a fornicial incision. So this is a 4O silk traction suture that's going through the perilimbal sclera. I'm going to rotate the eye infronasally. And I start to make an incision at the level of the ink mark. I'm going all the way across and I'm violating and cutting through the tenons. And as I do that, you can see the fat starting to come forward. And you want to be able to cut through the tenons so that you're getting the fat. So as you cut through, you can see the, the fat is coming through more clearly as you cut through the tenons. So I like to use a hemostat to clamp the fat before I cut it. So I'm using conch forceps to hold and pull up, making sure the tenons is retracted, pushing it away. Making sure I'm not grabbing again, like I said. It's just so much fat. So far to me, I've done several of these cases. This one was really one of the more aggressive orbital fat prolapses. So I place the hemostat, clamp the fat. And then I'm using Westcott scissors to amputate the fat off. And then while I'm lifting, I'm going to use an eraser tip cautery to cauterize the cut edge. Again, I'm lifting to make sure I'm not touching the skin. And so by cauterizing the cut edge, I'm going to minimize any chance for there to be any postoperative bleeding. Go ahead and release the hemostat, and as you can see, it's quite dry. And I start going back and pick at some more fat just to see, pushing bluntly with the cotton tip any of the tenon so that I don't catch it. So I have a good grip of some fat here. Switch hands, and then placing the hemostat again around the fat. I want to get a nice chunk of the fat. And then I'm going to trim that fat off and then again cauterize. 
I let the patients know that, you know, where this is just the tip of the iceberg, the fat that's coming forward is actually in the orbit. And so we're not removing all the fat. Patients are made aware and very clear that the fat that I'm removing is going to be good for now, but I have no promise or guarantee that the fat may not recur over time. But so far, patients have done quite well with no recurrences of the fat. So again, I'm just going after some more fat that's there. And just trimming up as much as I can. It's important that you don't accidentally cut through the lacrimal gland, of course. But as you can see, the fat has a distinctive appearance, which is quite different from the lacrimal gland. And of course, the fat is kind of falls apart when you try to grab it anyway. And again, I'm cauterizing the cut edge. And then release the hemostat. So at this point, I feel pretty good. This is how much fat came out. I mean, that's a lot of fat. And so this is 8x speed, and this is the 8-ovarical suture, and this is a running technique, running locking technique. And I'm going to first close tenons. Again, this is with a locking suture, and I'm going around all the way across the cut edge, and then I'm going back closing the conjunctiva with the same running suture. By doing it this way, you get a really nice closure. Again, when I was doing strabismus surgery as a resident, uh, my staff never closed the fornicial incisions whenever he did strabismus surgery. But in this case, I went ahead and closed it, and I felt really good about how the case looked at the end. And again, all that fat has been removed, and the patient was very happy and did very well with this extreme orbital fat prolapse excision. So this is my technique on how I'm able to resect orbital fat. Again, clamping the fat with a hemostat, cutting it, and then cauterizing the cut edge to minimize any bleeding. And this technique has worked very well in my hands. And again, I'm seeing more and more of these patients coming in with orbital fat prolapse. And again, this is a very easy procedure to perform both for the patient and for the surgeon. So I hope this was helpful to you. And I thank you for your attention.